hunting shack. Let's see what our hunters are up to today. Well, welcome to the A.W. Corbett Shack. This is a line shack that was built back in the 1930s and we have it here at the fairgrounds for your viewing and I'm going to demonstrate or explain what all these pieces of equipment are. This windmill that we have here, this was for the farmers for their drinking water and for their cooking. This water is pumped out of the ground by the wind because you can't drink the water that's on the surface because it's too warm, too much bacteria. And then next door to that, we have the Model A Swamp Buggy. That was back in the 30s when the Corbett House was built. And this is how transportation in the swamp or in the Everglades. And this is how we would go back to the main building when we had to, but the line check is used so we can stay out here all the time. And then over next door to it, we have the outhouse. We always had to have an outhouse and that we would always put it upstream as far away from the windmill as we could put it so the windmill wouldn't be affected by the water. Here we have our, our camp and we would always have a good fire going because this is where we would have the smoldering embers to keep the mosquitoes away from us and also we could feed the coals back into our campfire so we would have cooking. And it was easier to just keep a smoldering fire going rather than start one every day. And for our fresh vegetables, we would always have a garden. We'd have a garden growing. Most of the time it was tomatoes and corn, and that was what our staples would be. And we would grow those during the year. Then we have a artesian well that's in the back here. Now most of your farms had an artesian well which is water that's underground that comes up at a certain point to where the cap rock is cracked from the water pressure up north Florida and they would come down here so we always had that wherever the garden was so we could actually water it during the year on our drought. Now this wagon here you'll see these it looks like dead wood on it but this is lighter pine or fat lighter. It's a pine tree that was struck by lightning or a pine beetle to where the pine tree would start to die. Pine trees have turpentine in them. They would start to swell with the turpentine and then they would eventually die and it would be just leave the core or the heart of the tree which would be solid turpentine. And that's what a lot of your ranchers and farmers and hunters would use to start their firewood. It would be lighter pine they would call it. And that's what we built all our fences with. Now when this is loaded, so as a line check, they would take this wood and they would start running their fence lines. And then they would just bring this wagon along and they would cut the pine trees as they went and put their fences in because this wood won't rot because it's just solid turpentine. Now I'll go into the house. We'll go over here to the shack itself. This shack is constructed with lighter pine. All the main beams are lighter trees, which were bigger pine trees. And the, the beams on the roof, those are all lighter pine. So we never have to worry about them rotting. The siding to the building is tin. And this has been, this is the original tin from the 1930s. So it's doing very well. And the roof and the porch the same way. There's only a small, section of the house because you only had one or two beds in there so that's all you needed it for was to sleep. You have these huge windows that would allow the draft to go through the windows and they called a shotgun type house to where the wind would go in the front door and go right out the back door 
So it was a shotgun effect because you could shoot a shotgun straight through the house and not hit anything. And then you would have your wind. Over here we have all of our wood that we cut during the year, mostly oak. And we would cut that so we'd always have wood so we could cook, boil water, and so on. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you our cooking demonstration. And I'll show you what we have on the fire for supper tonight. Over here, I'll show you we have, we have our potatoes and we have our onions that we've been cooking those, just simmering those. I always start off with some bacon or some salted side meat that they would call. And that would give me my grease and my salt. Then I have a Dutch oven over here that this is where I would get and I would bake my biscuits. And of course you have to have your coffee so I'd always have my coffee. And then we have, in this pot here I have some venison and potatoes. And that's been cooking since early this morning. All right, I appreciate you being here for this little tour. I'm glad uh, you were able to come out and see this. But if you want to see a full demonstration of how we cook wild game at the Corbett Shack, come out during the South Florida Fair. I will demonstrate how to cook frog legs, alligator, deer, wild boar, and an occasional raccoon or possum. So please come out. And on your way out, any roadkill you see, bring it with you. And thanks for coming to the Corbett Shack of the South Florida Fairgrounds.